So I'm here working through the AP Physics exam. I got it right here, see? AP Physics exam, you can get this online. Uh, this is the 2017 test version. Uh, I have not looked at these problems. I, I did problem number one. Uh, it wasn't that exciting. Uh, and now I'm going to do problem number two. This one says, I read the instructions, and it says it should take 25 minutes. Uh, the other one said 30, 13 minutes. I'm not sure how long I took on it. but uh, So let's just get to it. And if I have to use Python, if I want to use Python, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do whatever I want uh, because I'm not really taking the test. Okay, so I haven't, I have not looked at this. So I'm looking at it for the first time live on camera right now. And I'll read it to you because you can't really read that. So let's turn this off because no one really cares. Capture. Okay. There. See? 12 points. Suggested time 25 minutes. A student wants to determine the coefficient of static friction between a long, flat wood board and a small wood block. Cool. Describe an experiment for determining the coefficient of static friction between the wood board and the wood block. Assume equipment usually found... <laughs> Assume equipment usually found in a school physics laboratory is available. You know, that's I don't like that because the labs are so different, right? Um, but whatever. Okay. Draw a diagram of the experiment. Experimental setup of the board and block in your diagram indicate quantity that would be measured and draw or state what equipment would be used to measure each quantity. Describe the overall procedure to be used. Include any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty given of detail. Okay, so I have two I have two ways I could do this. Okay, so this get that off. So here's what I would think first. Here's my board. And then it's it's on a table. And then here's my block. And if I want to find the coefficient of, it says static, right? Static friction. Um, so the normal model says that the, the frictional force is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So if I set the block on the table like that, then I have, uh, well, and I let's say I pull it with a four scale. Then I have, and I pull it until it just starts to move. In that case, I have the following forces. I have the gravitational force pulling down. I have the upward normal force pulling up. I have this F, I'm just gonna call it F, and then I have the backwards pulling frictional force. And if it's right before it starts to move, then the net force is zero. So in the y direction, I have n minus mg equals zero. And in the x direction, I have f, which is the, the amount that I get from the force, the force scale. And this could be a digital force scale, because those are a lot of, a lot of the physics labs have those. Or it could be like a spring scale, where you, the more you pull it, it has little markings on it, you can read it. Uh, so F minus the friction equals zero. So if I solve this for the normal force, I get N equals MG. If I put that in down here and I substitute in for the maximum frictional force, I get F, I'll move that to the side, equals mu MG. So if I measure the spring force, I measure the mass, you got to put that on a balance, There's my balance, and I put the little block on there. See that? It's a scale. And I get the mass. I assume, you know, I would, I would, if I was taking this test, I'd make a snarky comment. Let's put snarky about G. I mean, you can assume that it's 9.8. You could measure G. It didn't say you could assume. Oh, actually, no, wait. Okay, accelerate, oh, I don't like that either. This says acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. Um, that's I, a pet peeve of mine. I would say the gravitational field, the magnitude of the gravitational field on the surface of the Earth, uh, because this one's not accelerating, right? So it's just I don't like calling that acceleration due to gravity. I'd, I'd much rather call G the gravitational field. What am I even talking about? Okay. So that would give me, the coefficient would then be mu equals F 
over mg, and you could calculate it that way, static. Now, what if I want to uh, reduce the uncertainty? Well, what I could do is to change the, uh, the mass of this. I can add blocks on top of it. And that will change this mass, effective mass. And that will change the force needed to pull it. So if I plot, if I, if I change M and change and measure F, and if I plot, let's plot uh, F from the scale versus MG, then I should get linear data. And finding the slope of that, you see, so if this is y equals mx plus b is this, the equation of a line, then here I'm plotting f is my y, mg is my x, so this would be my slope. And I think the people grading this would be like, oh, that guy's cool. Okay. And yes, that's the way I would do it. Um, are we on part A of that? Yeah, I guess I'm taking too long. Uh, so there's another way to do this, uh, and this is the way that we do it in lab. It's the same idea, except if you don't have a spring scale or something like that, and if I lift this, if I put this on a movable board, and I lift it up and I can measure the angle, at some point it'll start to slide. So at the point it starts to slide, I have the gravitational force pulling down. Now, and, I, and this is the angle. I have the normal force is this way, right? Because it's normal to the plane, so it actually is, is at an angle. And then the frictional force is this way. And if I call this x and this y, that would be the angle theta. You can do some geometry to show that. So in the y direction, I have f net y equals 0, right? Because it's not accelerating this way. So I have n minus mg cosine theta, because where's my red? Is that my good red? So if I look at this right triangle, then the adjacent side is my vertical component of the gravitational force. And it's, it's not just mg because I have the whole thing tilted. Uh, and then in the y direct, in the x direction, let's say f net x equals 0. It's right where, right at the moment it starts to slide, right? So I'm right at the part where it's, it's, if I tilt it a little bit more, it slides. So if I record the angle that it started to slide at, then I can say uh, that's also 0. So I have uh, mg sine theta, right? That's this component of the gravitational force in the x direction, minus the frictional force is equal to 0. So I can solve this for friction, f friction equals mg sine theta, and then I can plug in the frictional force is equal to mu, the maximum frictional force is mu times n mg sine theta, and then I can say up here n equals mg cosine theta, and plug that in, and I get mu s equals, I'm going to divide both sides by n, I did, I'm doing that one step, mg sine, cause you know, it says you only have 25 minutes, so i got to rush here, uh, divided by mg cosine theta, and that's going to, that cancels, that cancels, sine over cosine is tangent theta. So this will give me the coefficient of friction based on that angle. Now, again, I could do this, I could, no, I couldn't do it for different masses, I could just repeat it many times repeat this many times because adding mass on this won't change the the answer here um, but repeat it many times and get the average and the standard deviation and that would be the best way for that okay part b derive an equation for the coefficient of static friction in terms of the quantities measured in the pre okay i did that already a physics class consisting of six lab groups wants to test the hypothesis that the coefficient of static friction between the board and the block equals the coefficient of kinetic friction between the board and the block. So they want to show that the, the coefficients are the same. Okay. They determine the coefficient of kinetic friction and static friction on the board and block. The group's results. Okay, so lab group number. Co okay. Fine. This is a kind of... I, I feel like this is going to be make me not happy but based on the data what conclusions should students make about the hypothesis that the coefficients 
of static and kinetic friction are equal. So here you see that they have two things. They have the averages are the same, and then the numbers are are different. Okay, uh, and and what, how do you deal with a situation like this where how do you make a comparison? This is something that's I suspect. AP Physics has a set way they want you to do this. If I were to do this in my class, I would say uh, mu s equals uh, 0 0.49 plus or minus some delta mu s, where that's the co that's the uncertainty in the friction, and then mu k equals 0 0.49 plus or minus delta mu k. Uh, and normally, that if I, if the uncertainties, if the values with the ranges overlap, then they're probably they're not necessarily different. In this case, the averages are the same. So even if they have different uncertainties, I would say they're pr you can't say they're definitely different. Okay. So the static are equal or not equal. This is bad. They, you can't just say definitely they're equal. They're definitely not equal. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd pick that they're, e that they're equal. But I would say uh, you can't definitively say they're not equal. I don't like that question. It's going to come pretend like I'm moving on. Uh, I did justify my reason up there. They have the same average, even if they have an uncertainty that's different. They're still going to overlap in their ranges of uncertainty. That's the way I would do it. A metal disc is glued to the top of the wood block. The mass of the wood disc system is twice the mass of the original block. Does the coefficient of static friction between the bottom block and the bottom board increase, decrease, or remain the same? Remain the same. Uh, so I did that, right? over here, if you increase the mass, then the coefficient of friction stays the same. In, in the case over here, the mass canceled. So both in both those cases, it doesn't matter. The thing is, though, it does matter. So this is really cool. If you plot right here, if I plot uh, F versus MG, uh, it actually turns out that the that the slope is not constant. I think it does this. And when you get to really really high masses, the friction force stops increasing. So if if this gets really large, then it actually goes like this. Because friction is more complicated than you think. Okay, it, we can't always just use this for the friction. And say, oh, we're done. Everything's awesome. It's not awesome. Okay. Well, it is awesome because it's not that. Uh, that's just a model, an approximation. But when two surfaces are really, really, really pushed together, then eventually the, you don't get even a more frictional force. Force, not coefficient. Uh, but that would mean that it would change the coefficient. The effective coefficient friction does depend on how far they, how they're pushed together. But I doubt they want you to say that. Okay. So go to the next page. Okay, that's, that's problem number three. I don't want to look at it yet. Okay, so I think that was less than 25 minutes, and I'll do another problem later.